Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman and in this lesson we're going to be learning Hannon exercise number seven from his collection The Virtuoso Pianist. Let's come to the piano to get started. Let's take a look at measures one and two. My challenge to you is to pause the video and figure out the right hand part of measures one and two by yourself. Be sure to watch the notes and fingerings carefully. Then press play and we'll check it out together. Here's what you should have figured out. We start with finger one on middle C, skip up, step down, skip up, step down, skip up, step down, step down. And now here's the tricky thing. Our finger one is asked to play D. Normally our finger two would want to play that D, but here's how we shift up. Usually in past hand and exercise, we've been doing some kind of finger stretch to get up, but this time it's a thumb glide. So our finger one is going to glide over to D and then everyone else just shifts over after that. And that's the pattern in this one. Okay, so we stay in that same position the entire measure and then our thumb glides over and that scoots us up. Thumb glides over and that scoots us up. Very simple. All right, now let's take a look at the left hand part. My challenge to you this time is to pause the video and look at the left hand part and see if you can find something unexpected. There's one fingering in measure one and another fingering in measure two that isn't quite what you would expect. Pause the video, learn the left hand part, watch the fingerings carefully, and then press play and we'll check it out together. Did you find that unexpected fingering? Where is it? We have a five, skip up, step down, skip up, step down, skip up. Now here is the unexpected fingering. Our finger two would normally be expected to play that F, but Hannon wants to train your fingers to do tricky things. And so finger three is gonna scoot over for F, E, D. And that's how your left hand ends up moving up a position is by finger three scooting over. Remember our thumb was scooting over in the right hand part, but in the left hand it's going to be finger three that scooches over to F. Yes, that is a technical term. Scooch over three, one, and then finger three scooches over. On that second to last note of every measure, the left hand finger three is going to scooch over a note and what that will do is help give extra exercise for fingers three, four, five. Your fingers one, two, three often are considered the strongest fingers, but those four and five will get some extra practice this way. Now, what makes this tricky is when you put it hands together, when you get to this note, your right hand is gonna play finger four, your left hand, finger three scooches over, so it will feel like your fingers are a little out of sync until you get to the first note of the next measure. See how that works? So right here, the left hand, finger three scooches over. So feel free as you're first practicing this hands together to pause right there before you play the seventh note of the measure, that second to last note. Give your hands time to figure that out. But then eventually, you'll be able to do that at full speed and do that finger scooch automatically. Now let's skip ahead to measure seven, the last measure of ascending. And what do you notice here on the seventh note? Now something new happens. Finger three plays in both hands and that prepares us for measure eight where we start descending. Okay, so it's very important to watch that fingering carefully in measure seven. In fact, let's try that. Skip up, step down, skip up, step down, skip up. Then in both hands, finger three scooches over, step down, step down. Pause the video and work on measure seven. Maybe right hand alone once, left hand alone once, then try it hands together, then press play to go on. Now let's check out descending. And this time let's try the left hand first. Can you once again challenge yourself, pause the video, and try measures eight and nine, left hand alone, descending, 
watch for any tricky fingerings that Hannon may try to throw in there, and then press play and we'll check it out together. Here's what you should have gotten. Figure one on G, skip down, step up, skip down, step up, skip down, step up, step up, and then here, finger one is gonna scooch over. So basically the left hand's doing what the right hand was doing before. It's common for these hand and exercises. And then once again, finger one scooches over and we continue on from there. Now if that matched what you played, great job. If you need extra time to work that out, then feel free to press pause. Otherwise, let's check out the right hand part. Once again, let's challenge yourself, pause the video and try to figure out right hand just measures eight and nine. Watch out for any fingering challenges, then press play and we'll check it out together. So, did you find the tricky spot? Here it is on the seventh note, just like the left hand had before, our finger three has to scooch over there. Five, three, four, two, three, one, three scooches over. Five, three, four, two, three, one, finger three scooches over. So once again, the challenge will be on that seventh note. The left hand's gonna play finger four, but the right hand has to scooch over finger three, and then the left hand thumb scooches over. So the scooching happens at a different time for each hand. The right hand does it on that seventh note, the left hand follows on the first note of the next measure. So be really careful. If you do those fingerings correctly, you'll get maximum finger exercise. So pause the video and try in slow motion, just measures eight and nine. And when you get here, you might pause for a moment so the right hand finger three can scooch over and then maybe pause here so the left hand finger one can get ready. Take your time to get it right. Slow is fast. Meaning when you practice slow, you'll get better faster than if you practice fast. Pause to work on measures eight and nine, hands together, then press play to go on. Now let's take a look ahead at measure 14 and I want you to pause the video and once again I challenge you to try and figure this out, this time hands together and watch both hands really carefully for any fingering challenges. Then press play and we'll check it out together. Now, I like to use Hannon as a time to make sure I have my best piano posture. You're not getting any benefit out of Hannon if you practice it sloppily with bad piano posture. Then you're just building bad habits. You'll become an expert at playing badly if you practice with bad habits. So make sure you have a tall back, make sure you have no hula fingers, play your finger five near the tip, Another great tool for practicing Hannon is the metronome. I've got it set at 100 beats per minute. You can start one note per click when you're first learning, but eventually try two notes per click. And then you can gradually speed it up, speed it up until you're going as fast as you want to challenge yourself. You can also practice different articulations. Maybe play one measure staccato, one measure legato. You can use the rhythms I taught you earlier. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And then switch that up with short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Or fast fours.
One thing about practicing Hanan is it's an opportunity to work on very smooth and even playing. So when you play it just normally, listen to your sound and make sure that certain notes aren't popping out louder than others. Try to make it as smooth and as even. You can even add phrasing to work on controlling the shape and sound of each note. Now that we've learned exercise number seven, we've learned all of the first 10 of Hannon's exercise from the virtuoso pianist. So once you have number seven mastered, I encourage you to go back and review all 10 of Hannon's exercises. You could maybe do a different one every day. Work on speed, work on accuracy, work on evenness. You don't want it to sound bumpy or uneven. Listen and keep improving the sound of your playing. Great work today on Hannon exercise number seven from the Virtuoso Pianist. Thanks for watching and learning with me and happy practicing. Hey, want to hear a joke about a staccato? You bet. Never mind, it's too short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about a joke about a fermata? Okay. No, it's, it's too, too long. long. <laughs> <laughs>